Hello everyone. Happy Friday. I am so excited that the weekend is around the corner and I am going to get all kinds of things done to prepare for Christmas. So with that said, we are in the throes of the holiday season and everyone is short on time. The funny thing is that that feeling of overwhelm and lack of time is escalated right now, but it's really something that we all tend to think about or struggle with the entire year through. So my goal today is to give you some guidance on time and how you can hopefully manage your time, not manage your time, but look at time in a new way, a new light, and kind of change your perspective about time and how you're going to use your time more wisely, I guess, in 2022. So um, as you come on, say hello. If you have questions, put them in the comments. I will um, try to get to questions by the end. If I miss a question, um, I will get to it as soon as the recording is over and I'll go back in and look and see um, what everyone had to say. So when we talk about time, we, meaning every single one of us, has 1,440 minutes in a day. If we break that down, we have 96 15 minute blocks of time. If we assign 32 of those blocks to rest or sleep, which if you're not getting seven to nine hours of sleep at night, I encourage you to restructure your lifestyle, your daily habits so that you can get enough rest. We know that getting enough sleep doesn't only help us with our emotional and physical health, but it also helps us with our productivity levels. And it helps with just overall life management, success, it keeps us healthy, it keeps those stress hormones down, which end up causing us to gain weight and all of those other things. So especially um, for women as we age, it is really, really important to get enough sleep. So I encourage you to take those 32 15 minute blocks and use them for sleep. So after we take out that time to sleep and rest, we still have 64, 64 15 minute blocks of time to play with, to do life with. How we use that time is our choice. How you use your time is your choice. You have the same amount of time as I have. And there are people who do incredible things in the same exact amount of time that we have. No, nobody, nobody on this earth has more time than you have. Nobody has more time than I have. We all have the equal amount of time. So if you notice I'm looking down, it's because I did jot down notes and there are certain things that I want to hit on today that I'm gonna make sure that I, I don't skip or don't forget to mention. So when we, when we talk about this being a choice, each and every one of us gets to choose how we spend our time. Notice I didn't say manage your time. And the reason I didn't say manage your time is because time is not manageable. Time is consistent. We all have the same exact number of hours and minutes and seconds in a day, every single one of us. So if that's the case, whether or not we have enough time comes down to the fact that we are making choices about how we spend our time. So let me ask you, how do you spend those 64 15 minute blocks of time? What do you do with that time? How much time do you spend doing versus how much time do you spend playing? And when I talk about playing, you might not know exactly what I mean. I don't mean necessarily like playing games or, um, you know, going shopping or things like that. I'm talking about those distractions that we have. 
The distractions that we have can be broken down into beneficial distractions and meaningless distractions. Beneficial distractions are those distractions where you can actually tap into your playful nature, which is going to then increase your creativity. For some, that may be tapping into um, art. It may be tapping into music. It may be um, going for a walk in nature or just walking your dog. It could be, um, it could be watching TV. The key to determining whether your distractions are beneficial or meaningless is to think about how do they make you feel? So do they make you feel rejuvenated and you have a spike in creativity or do they make you feel irritated and frustrated? Like you just wasted time doing whatever that activity was. Now, keep in mind, I realize we all have distractions that are completely out of our control. Maybe your child comes in and wants to go play soccer. And what are you gonna say? Chances are you're gonna say, you know what? I'm too busy right now, I've gotta finish this. But if your child came in and said, they fell off the swing set and their wrist is hanging like this, you are going to stop what you're doing and you're going to immediately get them the help that they need. Those are different types of distractions. Those are distractions that we really cannot control. But when we start to think about time in a different way and we start prioritizing our time, we're able to take those distractions in stride and handle them and enjoy that additional time when it's not necessarily an urgent need that our child has. It's something that we can choose to, okay, you know what? It would be a good time for me to take a quick break and go play and I'll come back refreshed and able to focus again, maybe even better than I was focusing before. Or it gives you a different perspective on what it was you were doing and how you were doing it when you come back to it. Because sometimes when we take that break and we step away, we get new ideas and we get a flood of creativity, which ends up helping us be not only more productive, but doing more meaningful work. So let's use, um, instead of those types of distractions that are really out of our control, let's look at the type of distractions like maybe binge watching a TV show. All of your friends are talking about this TV show and you want to catch up on it. So you're going to binge watch this TV show. When you finish watching TV shows or binge watching a show, how do you feel? Do you feel rejuvenated, inspired? Are you ready to dive back in and feel creative? Have your creative juices been stimulated and you're just ready and motivated to take action? Or do you feel completely irritated and frustrated that you spent that time doing that? Maybe you even feel other negative emotions like you're, and you're beating yourself up for taking that time to yourself. When we think about how we spend our time and we have that choice we have the opportunity to choose the things that give us positive energy, not negative energy. We want to do the things that inspire us and motivate us and result in us taking more intentional action. So instead of maybe if, if binge watching a TV show leaves you feeling negative or frustrated or irritated, maybe think about those things, not maybe, do, think about those things that actually give you positive results, give you positive energy, and push you into a, a new space of creativity and productivity. Maybe prioritize going for a walk or drawing. Maybe if you play the piano or the guitar or a musical instrument, maybe that would be therapeutic to you. I know for me, if I just step away and I take a deep breath and I go for a walk and I get some fresh air or I listen to music or I pick up a book and I just read for a little while, I can come back and feel completely refreshed and motivated to dive in, but to force myself, you know, to sit for a while and focus for a while. Once I have taken that break, my focus, my creativity, everything seems to flow so much better. So the key here is to think. Do you know that we have something like 6,200, 6,200 thoughts a day? That means we have a th like four thoughts on average every single minute of our day. That is crazy to me. 
But when you think about it, our minds are constantly going. Our brains are constantly coming up with something. Our, our minds are always filling, you know, with, with another idea or a, another thought. But do you recognize what you're thinking about? When you are thinking and when you're those 6,200 thoughts are coming into your mind in a day, do you recognize what you're thinking about? What are those thoughts? Are you paying attention to them? Because so many of these thoughts are, if we're not sure about what these thoughts are, we can't be intentional about our thoughts. So it's really important to take that step back and recognize those thoughts that we're having. This is really important, especially if you are not seeing results in your business, because if your time is being spent on negative thoughts, if you're thinking negative thoughts 85% of the time, you're going to have negative results 80% of the time, 85% of the time, whatever number I used. Um, so it's really important to focus in on what those thoughts are so that your thoughts can become intentional and then you can start taking intentional action from those thoughts. So how can you change these thoughts? If you think about it, and you, you want to begin to control the thoughts, right? So how can you do that? Take a look at where your thoughts are. Look back at the course of the past few days, few weeks, and, and really kind of analyze, like, where was your headspace? What were you thinking of? If you think of a pie chart, if 50% of that pie chart is filled with your thoughts that, what am I going to make for dinner? You're not going to be getting results, right? If... 34 or if three fourths of that pie is of thoughts of goals and ideas in your business and, and you navigating those goals and doing the action items that those goals um, need to produce results, that is going to produce results, but it could potentially also produce burnout. So the, the one thing that I wanna emphasize here is that it's not like you're gonna have balance in those pie slices or the dimensions within that pie and the percent of time that you're spending on XYZ. That is going to shift. And those shifts are actually pretty important because you're going to put your time, your thoughts, your energy into one portion of that pie for a certain amount of time, but then it's gonna swing back like a pendulum. Uh, and then you're going to have an emphasis on something else. So one day it may be, your thoughts are strictly focused on your goals. But the next day, you may have to have more of that pie slotted out for thinking about your child or your family or what you what you need to do to make sure that everyone is safe and healthy. Um, that is all going to shift. There's never going to be a 50-50 balance. There's always going to be multiple slices of that pie that are going to take up different portions of your time, your thoughts, and your activities. So how can you actually look at your thoughts and make sure that your thoughts are in the right place? So when you, when you are thinking, if you are paying attention to your thoughts, it gives you an opportunity to catch them. When you catch those thoughts, you can ask yourself, are they, I'm gonna look at my notes here because I don't wanna miss anything, but are they important? Are they positive? Will they help you reach your goals? Will they nourish your heart and soul? Will they replenish your energy and creativity and help you move the needle forward on your business or your life? If not, it's time to challenge those thoughts and redirect them. Once you get into the habit of paying attention to your thoughts, it's going to be so easy to recognize when those thoughts are not positive thoughts, they're not productive thoughts, and they're not giving you the opportunity to take intentional action to reach your goals and to reach your dreams and make those things come to reality and, and fruition. So Gay Hendricks, I don't know if you guys have read The Big Leap. If you haven't, I love this book. I have read it and I could read it a million times because I think there's always something in there that I learn or I grasp as I go through it. But he talks about Einstein time. As I said, we cannot control time. We cannot manage time. We all have the exact same amount of time in our days. 
But what we can do is we can prioritize our time. We can prioritize the actions that we have or that we do and, and how we spend that time. When we use Einstein time and we think about Einstein time as in everybody has the same amount of time, we start to prioritize our to-do list. So as we start thinking, recognizing our thoughts and start recognizing what out of those thoughts is important and that we need to address and we need to do, we can start managing our, not managing, but controlling <laughs> how we spend our time. And those priorities become habit after a, a set amount of time. So it, it really truly is about not achieving balance, but about prioritizing. So things and priorities, as I said, as I was talking about that pie, they will shift. And it really is like that pendulum. You know, they're gonna shift this way and maybe your personal life is gonna have most of those thoughts and most of that time one day, but then it's gonna swing back and that next day, maybe all business. Everything shifts, but the most important thing I can stress here is that you have the option, you have the choice to choose your thoughts, navigate those thoughts, challenge them and change them and apply that to your time and how you spend your time. The more you prioritize your time and you prioritize navigating those thoughts, the more that you're gonna allow or have or experience positive thoughts that will move the needle forward on your business. So how can you manage time? Here is a simple way that you can implement this for 2022. And you can start today, get out your calendar for 2022 and eliminate, make, make a list of those things that you don't love to do they are not having an impact in your business. They're not making you money, generating revenue. They're not helping you get more clients. They're not helping you sell. Get rid of them, eliminate them, or delegate them. If it's something that you love to do and it's producing results, keep it. And put those things into your calendar so that you don't miss out on those you don't miss out on the opportunity to do those more and spend more time doing them. Prioritize them on your calendar and you can start that today. If there are things, like I mentioned, that you don't love to do, that are not moving the needle forward on your business, they're not fueling you, they're not giving you positive energy, you have the opportunity to delete them out of your life. So, um, I, I'm, I'm I guess the best example I can give you is for the past 11 years, I've been working as a professional photographer and I made the decision this year to retire from photography. I was spending a lot of time. Was photography making money for me? Yes, it absolutely was. And I feel blessed that I had a successful photography business, but my goals and my dreams have shifted. And so how I want to spend my time and where I want to prioritize my time is different now. And it doesn't fuel me to be spending my time editing photographs. It doesn't fuel me to spend my time doing the things on the photography side of my business that it, it ha in the same way that it fuels me to coach my clients and have a more um, deeper impact, more meaningful impact for my clients and the world. And in addition to that, I'm writing a book, I wrote a book. And so my time goals have shifted. My priorities have shifted. So for me, that, that pie chart, you know, I had a significant chunk, probably a third of my time was spent on photography, which left less time for me to do the things I wanted to do to grow my coaching business. So I made the choice to eliminate photography. I simply made an announcement and I stopped. I gave the, the, the notification and the end of November, I stopped taking photography clients. Now, I had a plan of action in place. And this is where if you're going to stop doing something that you've been doing, maybe if you have a podcast or maybe you have a Facebook group, whatever that case may be, announce it. 
but give yourself a schedule. Give yourself an opportunity to plan for, and this is what I mean by taking out your calendar and put these things that you're gonna eliminate or start delegating, map out the plan to do so. So if you're gonna hire someone, you have to map out the plan. What is the date you're gonna hire someone by? When are you gonna have them trained by? And when are they taking over? If you're going to stop doing something and eliminate it from your time schedule, then you need to plan for that. And you, do you need to make an announcement? Do you need to, do you have certain things that you have to finish before you can eliminate that? Like I did have shoots that I had to complete before I said, okay, I'm not doing photography anymore. So they were already on the schedule. I couldn't just walk away from those. So you have to plan for either that exit strategy or hiring someone to start taking over those responsibilities. So make a list of those things that you love, that fuel you and are fueling your business and make a list of those things that you don't love and they're not fueling your business and decide what you're gonna keep and what you're going to continue to spend your time on and what you're not gonna spend your time on so that you can spend your time doing those things that are going to make a difference, make an impact in your life, your clients' lives, and your business. Okay, you guys, that's it. I have um, said all I needed to say, I think, related to time and my perspective about time. I think if you shift your mindset around time and realize that it's not a matter of managing time, it's not a matter of controlling time. It's a matter of prioritizing your thoughts and prioritizing your actions and how you're going to spend that time. Like I said, we all have the same exact amount of time in a day. And if I can have basically three businesses, a coaching business, the, the podcast, write a book, and let's see, what did I say? The coaching business, the photography business, write a book, and the podcast. So basically four businesses this entire year and still be able to be productive and successful, you can do it too. I have no doubt in my mind. It's just a matter of shifting your thoughts and prioritizing. All right, have a great weekend. I hope you all have a fabulous time with family, friends, doing those things that you love to do, but also prioritizing some time for yourself to play.